Honourable Member for Regina Louvain. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. The question that prompts uh, this evening's adjournment debate was whether the government would enact a carbon tariff. And the context for this question is that the federal government has enacted a national price on carbon. One of the main concerns about a national carbon price is that it could prompt carbon intensive industries to relocate to other countries that do not put a price on emissions. Mr. Speaker, that would increase global emissions while eliminating Canadian jobs. Adjusting our carbon pricing at the border with a carbon tariff on imports and a rebate on exports would safeguard Canadian jobs while ensuring that our carbon pricing actually helps to reduce global emissions. I think this concept of carbon border adjustments can be illustrated with the help of an example. Producing a ton of steel in China and shipping it here emits about five times as much carbon as manufacturing it at the Everaz mill in Regina. However, if we just put a price on Canadian emissions, that would tend to increase the price of Regina-made steel, creating an incentive for consumers to, to instead use dirtier steel from China. This would eliminate Canadian jobs and actually increase global emissions. By comparison, Mr. Speaker, if we had a national carbon price with a corresponding carbon tariff, it would increase the price of steel imports from China by more than it would increase the price of Regina-made steel. This would create an environmentally appropriate incentive for Canadians to buy local. So, Mr. Speaker, in a nutshell, uh, that's what's being proposed with a carbon tariff. Now, Mr. Speaker, the government um, certainly, I think, recognizes uh, that there is uh, a challenge with competitiveness. And what the government has instead proposed, rather than adjusting carbon pricing at the border, is basically to rebate between 80 and 90 percent of uh, carbon tax revenues directly to the large emitters. So the government is essentially on board with the idea of um, uh, some sort of a rebate uh, to large emitters. The government just wants to you know, base it on their output uh, rather than on the amount uh, that they export. Um, but the government is prepared to undertake this huge cost, which will come at the expense of the consumer rebates that the government has proposed to try to make carbon pricing more palatable. What I feel the government is missing out on is the potential to collect its carbon price on the carbon content of imports from countries that don't price emissions. This carbon tariff would help to ensure a level playing field as I've described, but it would also collect revenues uh, to help uh, offset the cost of whatever funds are rebated to industry, either through the government's existing output-based rebates or through an export rebate, as I've proposed. So, Mr. Speaker, by fully adjusting Canada's carbon price at the border, including a carbon tariff on imports, the government could help to protect Canadian jobs, help to reduce global emissions, and also collect more revenue to fund greater rebates to all Canadians. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The federal carbon pollution pricing system is not about raising revenues. It is about recognizing that pollution has a cost, empowering Canadians, and encouraging cleaner growth and a more sustainable future. That is why, for provinces that have not committed to pricing carbon pollution, the federal government will return the majority of direct proceeds from the regulatory charge on fuel in the form of climate action incentive payments directly to individuals and families in the province of origin. Climate action incentive payments enable the government to encourage lower gas house, greenhouse gas emissions without imposing a financial burden on households. In Saskatchewan, these payments are estimated to be worth 
$305 for individuals and $598 for a family of four in 2019, rising to $731 for individuals and $1,459 for a family of four by 2022. Additional top-up payments will be available to address the additional burden placed on individuals in small and rural communities. Additionally, a smaller portion of funds collected through the backstop of these, in these four provinces will be used to fund programming to help small and medium-sized businesses, not-for-profit organizations, municipalities, universities, schools, and hospitals. And, in, in, and Indigenous recipients reduce their energy usage and greenhouse gas emissions while also saving on energy costs. Mr. Speaker, under the Greenhouse Gas Pollution Pricing Act, the federal carbon pollution pricing system has two parts a regulatory charge on fuel, a regulatory trading system for large industry called the Federal Output-Based Pricing System. The Federal Output-Based Pricing System is designed to ensure there is a price incentive for large industrial emitters to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and spur innovation while maintaining competitiveness and protecting against carbon leakage. The Federal Output-Based Pricing System went into effect on January 1, 2019 in Ontario, Manitoba, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and partially in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan has proposed a pricing system for some of its industries based on an output-based performance standards approach. The Federal OBPS will fill in the gaps in that province by covering the emission sources not covered by Saskatchewan's system, example, the electricity and natural gas transmission pipeline sectors. Member for Regina Louvain. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. The Parliamentary Secretary uh, sung the praises of the government's climate action uh, rebate, and I agree it makes sense uh, to rebate uh, money to households. And in fact, I'm putting forward a proposal uh, for the government to deliver uh, even bigger uh, rebates. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I think, though, the fundamental issue that has not been addressed here is the question of imports versus Canadian-made products. Yes, the government has implemented this output-based pricing scheme uh, to try to uh, prevent Canadian industry from being displaced out of the country uh, by the national carbon price. However, it hasn't done anything to ensure a level playing field between Canadian industry and uh, products coming in from abroad, often from countries that don't price emissions. Does the Parliamentary Secretary not agree that a carbon tariff would be a way of addressing that problem? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And allow me to highlight other major in initiatives undertaken by this government to combat climate change. In June 2017, the Minister of Environment and Climate Change launched the Low Carbon Economy Fund that includes $1.4 billion to help provinces and territories deliver on commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and promote clean growth. This funding was available to all provinces and territories that adopted the Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change. Unfortunately, Saskatchewan chose to forego this potential funding and not adopt the Pan-Canadian Framework. In March 2018, the Minister of Environment and Climate Change launched the Low Carbon Economy Challenge, component of the Low Carbon Economy Fund that will provide over $500 million to provincial and territorial governments, as well as municipalities, businesses, not-for-profit organizations, and, indig and Indigenous communities and organizations to fund projects that will reduce emissions, create jobs, and fight climate change. Mr. President. 